Hello, beloved. It's me, Coach Carmen, the Kingdom Health, Purpose, and Wealth Coach and founder of SharingTheBliss.com, where we take you on a joyful journey to holistic health, purpose, and wealth with programs to help you to soothe your soul, heal your body, turn your pain into power, and your purpose into prosperity. Well, happy Saturday evening, everyone. I know this is not the normal time I'm on, but this is what I was, um, <laughs> this is the time I was led to come in and uh, share some information with you. I think something that has been on my heart that I wanted to share and what better time than now. So I know many of you are getting ready for this year. You're preparing, you're planning, you are setting up your year. Hopefully you are. Many of you are actually, oh, this is my hubby. Hi, honey. <laughs> Hi, sweetie. My husband's on here. Awesome. Yes, yeah, so you're planning an awesome year. Hopefully that's what you're doing. And many of you are realizing that you need more time. <laughs> the month is moving on and you was hoping that you would have finished your plans for the year and believe me i'm in the same boat i have been working very diligently to set up my year and i need another week at least to get it all together but that's okay what i want to share with you today is something that will supersede all of that something that will give you an extra supernatural like just it's something that will push you so much further. <laughs> Thank you for the love, honey. That will push you so much further faster if you understand the secret. And I'm talking about the secret to transformation, total life transformation. You want to know what it is? Hmm. I'll tell you what it is. Well, it really is the art of being, the art of being. That's what I want to share with you tonight. Uh, I want to share with you through scripture. I want to share with you through experience, but I'm going to keep it short and sweet. I think what I will be sharing with you will totally bless you and, and transform your life, put you in the position of transforming your life. Okay, because that's all that's what we all want to do, right? We don't want to be where we were. We don't want to have that old nature. We want to step into the life that God created us to live. We want to be the people, the people, the persons that God created us to be. Amen. And you know, we grow and we develop from glory to glory, but we want to get our glory and be glorious sooner than later. This is 19, um, 2019, right? So it's time. I was talking to many of the women in my Healed Whole Body and Soul program, and we had a 28 Day Body and Soul Detox program today. It was awesome. And, you know, I was just talking about how important it is to just do it, to just do it. I was saying to them that I had some journals and day planners that I collected through the years. And I was looking at a day planner uh, that I had, it was about 10 years old. And I was looking at the list of some of the things that I had wanted to do 10 years ago. And do you know, there were so many things that I never did. Things that I had on my list to do, I never did. And I said, this is ridiculous already. Why would I have waited 10 years to do these things? Why is it every year I plan to do it, do those things, and I just haven't done them? And one of the reasons is because I was trying to do them in my old nature, as opposed to trying to do them or doing them in my new nature. And let me explain that to you. I'm gonna explain with a couple of scriptures. First of all, God has told us that and, and commanded of us to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. He knew that we would be in this world and the world would dominate our thoughts and, hey, Craig, how are you? The world would 
influence us in such a way that we would we would veer away from the kingdom we would veer away from god's way of doing and being right we would start thinking the way the world thinks we would start leaning into the world and unplugging from the kingdom he knew that would happen so that's why he told us to be renewed to be transformed by the renewing of our minds if he wanted us to stay the same way he would not have told us that we should be transformed by the renewing of our mind in proverbs 23 7 the word says as a man thinketh in his heart so is he so if you're thinking old nature and you're trying to achieve specific goals with the old nature it's not going to happen or if it does happen, you're going to end up losing what you gained in a short period of time because you're not in vibrational alignment with it. You're not aligned with it because you're not it. The principle of being is something that God has, has given me. He gave this to me several years ago when I was working on my book, The Biblical Laws of Attraction. And I just think it's so amazing because it's so simple. It's the question is, who are you being? Are you being your old nature? Or are you being the nature that was that you were created to be? That God nature, that divine nature? Are you being the heiress, the heir that you were created to be? Or are you being that old nature? And you know the answer to that. Maybe on occasion that new man comes up out of you, the divine nature, you can see him or her, and you have so much success in that moment of time when that divine nature takes over, but then the old man comes back. So what we have to do is truly embody our true nature. We have to truly embody that kingdom heir, that kingdom heiress. So in order to be totally transformed in your life, all you have to do is embody that nature. And one of the ways you do that is study scriptures that tell you how to do it and explain to you why you can, why you should do it. And, and the fact that you can do it. Is the most important thing. You can release that old nature. You can be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So hold on to the scripture of Proverbs 23, 7, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he, because that's a clue. That's one clue. You have to think it in your heart. You have to be who you were created to be in your heart. You have to be that heir, that heiress in your heart. So are you thinking like an heiress? Are you thinking like that old nature? That old person who's constantly trying to set goals and never keep them, never, never able to achieve those goals. You've been wanting to get out of debt. You've been wanting to uh, have a certain lifestyle. You've been wanting to release certain habits and addictions, but you just have not been able to do it. You've been trying to even go through this Daniel fast. If you're doing the Daniel fast and you haven't been able to do it, why? Because the old nature is dominant. And what we have to do is fully engage the new nature. One clue is thinking, right? So as a man thinketh in his heart or her heart, as a woman thinketh in her heart, so is she. Now the trick here is you cannot, you truly cannot receive, this is, this is what I wrote in my, uh, this is my divine design intensive guidebook here. And I'm reading some of my scriptures from here. And this is the January intensive I'm doing with my healed whole body and soul clients. So this is one of the things that I wrote in here. And I also wrote in the biblical laws of attraction book. And it's a, it's a Coach Carmen um, quote. The universe will not give you, the universe will not bring you what you are not. 
I want you to hold on to that thought for a minute. Just breathe it in. The universe will not bring you what you are not, right? The universe will not bring you what you are not. Now, please do not take this to, uh, to think that I'm talking about the universe being God. You know, Coach Carmen, don't play that. I am not into new age. That is not my thinking at all. But we live in a universe and the universe is obedient to God because God is the creator of the universe, right? The universe is not God. God created the universe. The universe is contained in God. That's how awesome God is. But the universe is it's a reality and things happen in the universe and the universe is is a energy that we must be in vibrational alignment with because if we're not then we're not going to be able to connect with all of the blessings that god has for us because the universe is sort of like it's designed to do our bidding, just like angels are designed to do our bidding. So if we want to receive, we have to be. The universe will not bring to you what you're not. Okay, so if you want to have success, you have to be successful. And I don't mean that you have to physically be su successful. You have to be successful in your mind. You have to be successful in your heart. It starts there first. Once you're successful in your heart, then the universe can bring you success, right? Then the opportunities of success will come, but you have to be it first. The universe will not bring to you what you are not. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Okay, so I'm gonna give you a couple of other scriptures. Another way of saying the universe will not bring to you what you are not is to say that like attracts like. So if you are, if you are constantly thinking about failure, oh, I, you know, this has not happened yet. <laughs> I have someone very close to me who even today, and she, she knows a lot of this, but because she's had issues with things, um, with with things not working out for her in particular looking for a job finding a, a job uh she hasn't been able to find a job that she wants so that she's working now she's not happy with it and uh it's too far away and she's also been looking for an apartment and she has not had much luck with that so she's been saying lately this is way the way it's always been Everything has always been so hard for me. It has not been easy. It never is easy. Whenever I want to do something, it's always a challenge. It always, why does everything have to be so hard? So we've had this discussion before. So when she mentioned it again, uh, recently, I said, things used to be hard. I kept everything she would say in the present tense that was negative, I would say, used to be. Yeah, but that used to be. It used to be. Stop saying that it is now. Why are you constantly saying that it is now? The more you say that it is now, the more it's going to stay that way. You will never have any change in that situation if you if you don't stop calling those things that be as though they are. The word of God says, call those things that be not as though they are. The word does not say, call those things that be as though they are. It does not say that in the scripture. So when you are constantly calling your life the way you see it, that's what you're going to be. You're going to be it. You have to call your life the way you want it so that you can be it. So if you are having issues with, let's, let's, let's talk about her, for example, looking for that job, looking for that apartment, as soon as she starts and continues to say, and she, you know, she's been working on this for quite a while, but you can't let it go, beloved. You cannot let it go. You have to keep it in your mouth because every time you speak against what you want, that energy, those words are like seeds. 
They're energy seeds, energy seeds that are going out into the universe and bringing forth exactly what you're saying. So if you don't want that particular thing, if or if you do want that job, if you do want that new apartment, then you have to constantly say, I am so excited about my new apartment. I'm, ex I'm so excited that the divine perfect job that that I have the perfect job in perfect way. I am so excited that I have the perfect. Hey, Carisha. Hi, Vicky. Hi, Sarita. Kevin, Kenneth. Hello, Pierre. I am so happy that the perfect job in perfect way has found me. Now, that's not the case. It may not be in the case, the case in the natural. Thank you. It may not be the case in the natural, but it is the case in the spirit because everything happens in the spirit first. Everything that you want is already manifested in the spirit realm. But if you don't call those things that be not as though they are, you will never see it. You have to be it, beloved. You have to be it. Who are you being? Are you being the person that can't find a job? Are you being a person that is not able to find an apartment? Are you being the person that has a job? You're being the, the perfect job. You have, you're being a person that has that a wonderful apartment. So let's break that down. So how does that happen? It sounds good, but then it doesn't sound practical, right? How, how do you do that? Proverbs 23, 7, as a, man thinketh in his heart so is he it starts with your thinking you have to see it you have to think it you have to meditate on it you have to close your eyes and see the situation but you have to know clearly what you want first it starts with being clear about exactly what you want yeah you can be very specific because you need to be the angels need to know exactly what you want Otherwise, you may get something that you didn't really want. You get a new job, but it may be worse than the job you had before. But if you break it down exactly what you want and you start meditating on that and thinking about that, that's what you will eventually manifest. So I have here, therefore, we must think, feel, and act like that person. So we're thinking. We're meditating. Now we have to feel because feelings are everything. Feelings create more than anything because feelings are energy. When you put out feelings of, you can be saying one thing, but if you're not feeling it, the feelings have more power to create than even words, believe it or not. So imagine once you start verbalizing, sometimes you have to verbalize to get the feelings going because the words can create feelings too. So if you keep verbalizing, oh, I'm so grateful to have that perfect job in perfect way. I'm so happy that I have this wonderful apartment. Eventually, and we were talking about this today during the 28 Day Body and Soul Detox workshop, because this week we're talking about the soul uh, detox and how you have to redirect your soul your mind, your will, and emotions. So if you are verbalizing it enough, the feelings will start to come. You'll start to actually feel it. Sometimes it's hard to feel it initially. You have to feel it by saying it. Feel it by seeing it. And then the feelings will come. And when the feelings come, beloved, look out. It's on its way. It will be here very soon but you have to call it as though it's already here. All right, you have to call it as though it's already here. Now, I'm not talking about fake it till you make it. This is not fake it till you make it. As kingdom heirs and heiresses, we don't have to settle for, for faking anything because we already are. It already is, right? It already is in the spirit realm, so we don't have to fake. Second Corinthians 3.18 says, but we are, but we all with unveiled face, holding as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord 
are transformed into the same image from glory to glory as by the Spirit of God. Beholding as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord are transformed into the same image from glory to glory as by the Spirit of God. That's pretty profound. It's pretty profound. So once you know who you truly are, who God created you to be, then you start saying, yeah, well, wait a minute. I should have that perfect job. I should have the home that I want to have because of who I am in Christ. Because I am an heir. I'm Abraham's seed, an heir according to the promises of God. I'm a joint heir with Jesus. So of course I'm supposed to have this. You embody that, who you are. Embody whose you are and who you are. Embody it by confessing it, speaking it over and over, meditating on it. And then you have to start making choices every day as if you are that person. And it even starts with our food choices. Believe it or not, I know, it's, it always goes back to the food too. That's why we're doing Daniel fast. That's why we know we're detoxing because the food is very, it's a very important component of it all. Because if you can't make a choice between eating healthy and life and eating unhealthy and food that's death, then you, are you truly embodying that, that heiress, that heir? It's the, it's the small choices that you make every day that help you to embody who you truly are. So you didn't think I was going to end up adding food to this, but it is what it is. Food has a lot to do with it. So think about it. When you're doing the Daniel fast, you do the Daniel fast as if you are the heiress. You can, you have the discipline. You do have the mind of Christ. Let me see what my girl says. Carisha, 2 Corinthians 3.18. Yeah, girl. Amen. And Craig says, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. This is really deep because we're going into the second week we're in a second we're going to the third week of the new year we have to get it together we do not want to go into this year with the old man the old nature the old mindsets we must be transformed by the renewing of our minds we're living in a world today where we have to be strong in the lord and the power of our minds we cannot defeat the enemy with the old mind we we need empowerment we need success financial success we need abundance we need a lot of money to do god's work and to to live out the fullness of our lives we need lots of money and in order to have lots of money you have to embody a person who has lots of money you have to step into that heiress that heir that you are how do you do that another way is habaka to two three we all know that write the vision and make it plain upon tablets that he may run that readeth it right for the vision is yet for an appointed time but at the end it shall speak and not lie though it tarries wait for it wait for it because it will surely come it will not tarry so Habakkuk is telling you, write it down, get clear, talk about it, speak about it, even if it's to yourself, affirm it, find those scriptures and affirm the scriptures, and then write down who you truly are, what you desire, what you want, write it down. Once you put it down on paper, it's so much more powerful. That's why we're doing the vision boards. That's why on the last Saturday of this month, I'm having a vision board workshop for Healed Whole Body and Soul, uh, and all are invited. It's virtual and live, so you can be anywhere that has um, computer access. <laughs> you can do it anywhere. You can be anywhere. You can be in, um, in New Zealand. I have, a, I have a client in New Zealand. So you can be anywhere in the world. Let me know if you want to join us for that 
that workshop because the vision board is very important. You're writing, you, but you have to write down first before you even do your vision board. Because once you have it written down on tablet, like Habakkuk says, then you can create your vision board and you're not just grabbing stuff and guessing, oh yeah, that looks cute, yeah. No, you have an intention, you know exactly what you want and now you're gonna find those pictures that relate to exactly what you want. Yes, this is our study for women's ministry last night. You're kidding me, Carisha. Oh my gosh. I was at your church today. I stopped by uh, today, me and Minister Yarborough, but nobody was there. <laughs> but anyway, um, yes, yes, that is awesome. So, Isaiah. 43 18 19 tells us something tells us something because the old nature is going to want to come back the old man's going to want to come back even though we're being transformed by the renewing of our mind this is what isaiah 43 18 19 says remember not the former things neither consider the things of old behold i will do a new thing now shall now it shall spring forth shall you not know it i will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert for you god is telling us to remember not the former things he is over and over telling us that we need to step into our new nature that we need to embody who he created us to be so we go back to the art of being. All you have to do is be. Tell you, I mean, once you're clear as to who God created you to be, you write it down. That's why part of the divine design exercise is one of the things we do. One of the exercises is we create a bliss list. And this bliss list is just a list of things that or desires of your heart. And I have here a kingdom, heir, and heiress, a list of the desires of, of their heart. So, you know, what are your desires? Sometimes we're afraid to even talk about them because for so many reasons, maybe because we don't think it's holy. Maybe it's, you know, we're becoming, we think we're becoming too materialistic. Maybe it's because we feel like it will never happen. So we don't even want to torture ourselves. There's so many reasons, but the word of God tells us to write down our vision and to make it clear. Carisha says, amen. Hi, Tommy. Yes. So then after that, what we do is we start to, we write a screenplay. We write a screenplay because the screenplay is you writing out you can do it a couple of ways. You can write it out as if you're just writing one day of your life as this divine person who's living, I call it your purpose-driven dream life. Write out one day. How would that be? How would that day be? How would you, how would you start today? Where would you be living? What type of work would you be doing? Would you have a staff of people working for you? When you left the house that day, you know, um, what kind of car would you be getting into? Who would be your friends? Who would you be meeting? You know, what would you be eating? What, who would be taking care of your household? Write it all out. Because once you write it out, then again, it's easier for you to create that vision board. It's, cre it's easier for you to be. Now you can be that person because you have written out a life for that person. So now you can say, when you wake up in the morning, you tell yourself who you truly are. When you get up and you go into the kitchen and you see that you can have, um, hopefully you don't have all this unhealthy food that you shouldn't be eating in your house, but say you live with other people and they have bacon up in a refrigerator and eggs, right? You're like, no, that's not my nature. That's not my food. I'm going to have me a beautiful smoothie, a green smoothie, delicious. Oh, I got to show you something that I just made. 
I haven't made these in a while, but actually this is granola. And these are organic raw vegan granola that I make. And I'm going to be doing a video showing you how to make this um, granola. It's pretty awesome. It has fruit and um, sprouted buckwheat and oh, it's awesome. So anyway, so you have yourself have yourself a bowl of this granola with some nut milk and you have your green smoothie you know that kind of thing that's a choice you're choosing as the heiress that you are the heir that you are because an heiress an heir abraham's seed someone who is successful and abundant you have to take care of yourself you're not going to be just eating anything you're not going to be making choices that are unhealthy for you you have responsibility not for your not just for yourself but for your family, for other people who look up to you, you have uh, your business, you have to be strong and healthy for that. You have to be strong and healthy for your mind so that you can think clear, right? So that you can think clear and stay above the muck and the mire so that you can be able to make proper decisions. So even when it comes to your choices of your food, you're thinking differently. When it comes to choices of what you're wearing, you're not throwing on any kind of clothes and with stains on them. You know, you're going to invest in a few quality pieces of clothing. And even if you have just all you wear, I know one secret for uh, that, you know, we used to do in the fashion industry when we didn't have a whole lot of clothes and we always wanted to look chic or whatever. <laughs> You know, you wear a lot of black, a lot of white. We're all black, all white, all beige, like all one color. And it always looks rich, ri richer and nice instead of mixing so many different things. So it's all mo monochromatic, you know. But you want to start thinking in terms of dressing for success. You want to start to embody that person. Remember, we are not talking about faking it to remake it. We already are. We're just embodying who we truly are, our divine nature. Amen? Amen. Let's see if I had some other uh, scriptures I want to share with you. <laughs> Let me see. Yeah, okay. So I, I just want the last thing I want to do, I want to give you a few scriptures that confirm that God wants us to use our imagination. Okay, this is not a new age thing. In Joshua chapter 6, in Genesis 28, verses 12 to 16, Genesis chapter 30, verses 32 to 42. Those scriptures, those, those uh, chapters and verses clearly are examples of how God wanted us to use our imagination and and gave us our imagination to use so that we can create because god is a he is a creating a creative being and he created us to be creative beings and we are sitting around and putting up with this accepting this and and living so low so far beneath our our true nature and it's not necessary. It's not necessary. All you have to do is know exactly what you want and envision it. You need to go to bed with your eyes closed and seeing yourself having the things that you want, right? And stop speaking what you don't want. Call those things that be not as though they are, all right? Self-doubt and overthinking is self-sabotage. Self-doubt and overthinking is self-sabotage. That's right, Carisha. Self-doubt. I'm going to leave you with this one last thing, talking about self-doubt. This is another thing um, during the Healed Whole Body and Soul tele teleclass, teletraining I had on Thursday night. I was talking about this, and I... The reason why I was, it was someone in the group, a beautiful woman, gorgeous woman, who had a lot, she has a lot of insecurities. 
And she said she had a lot of insecurities because when she was a child, she always wanted to be on stage and she pretended that she was um, on stage, an actress or whatever. And even she was, she had the opportunity to perform several times. And someone very close to her in her family would put her down and tell her that she, you know, didn't have what it takes and she could never really be a star and all these negative things. And it just crushed her spirit. She was a little girl. She's a grown woman with grown kids now. She still has those insecurities that were put on her as a child. It was just like somebody dulling her shine, just trying to put like um cover up her shine cover up her her glow her glory and we all have experiences with that maybe not to that extreme but we've all had that experience where people would try to put you down and make you feel like you don't really have it or really try to um you know how you have friends they they they, they love you but at the same time they don't want to see you grow and to do better so they're constantly reminding you of the way you you know the way you really are oh well that's not that's not you really because we know you we knew you when right they don't want you to leave that old nature they want you to stay in that old nature because they're comfortable with you living in that old nature but like someone else i just spoke to the other day she was telling me no i'm leaving a lot of people behind this year because I cannot have people holding on to me that's pulling me down. So getting back to this beautiful woman whose uh, family member was dulling her shine and now she's very insecure, I told her that, listen, you can't, you can't be feeling like you, um, I was telling her basically, we tend to try to have that self-confidence Thank you. We try to have self-confidence. When we lack confidence, and like Carisha said, self-doubt, we have self-doubt, then we try to build our own selves up. We try to have that self-confidence. Self-confidence is fleeting. Self-confidence is not real. Self-confidence is not going to, it's not sustainable. What you need, what I need, what we need is confidence in Christ. The confidence in Christ is what's going to lift us up. The confidence in Christ is what's going to really open us up. And that light of Christ within us will brighten up every dark area in our souls. And we will start, we will start to shine from within. Nobody can dull that kind of shine. Nobody can take that away from you. Because that's Christ in you, your hope of glory. So whenever you feel self-doubt, you feel insecure, you feel like you can't do it, you know, you just make sure that you say, I have the confidence in Christ in me. I have confidence in Christ in me. Christ in me, my hope of glory. How can you just feel like, um, like a shrinking violet, a shrinking violet when you have Christ in you? And people see that. People pick up on that. And they'll start to back off those who were like trying to say negative things about you, uh, you know, reminding you of who you really aren't and all of that. The reality is they'll start to back off because that, that frequency of God in you is too bright. And that spirit that's warring against them to try to put you down because we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers rulers of the dark wicked spirits in heavenly places the people who are trying to dull down your shine anyway they're being controlled by demonic spirits spirits that know you and trying to keep you away from the light keep you from being who god created you to be but the devil is a liar you have confidence in christ and you can do all things through christ who strengthens you you are an heir and you are an heiress. You are Abraham's seed and heir according to the promises of God. Nothing is too wonderful to happen to you. Christ in you, your hope of glory. Christ in you, your glory. I like to say, Christ in you, your glory. Your glory. You are glorious. And this is your year, beloved. This is your year. 
This is your year to shine. This is your year to live the life God created you to live. See it, focus on it, meditate on it, speak on it, write it down, visualize it. Because it's waiting for you in the heavenly realm. Amen. Amen. All right. So Carisha says, amen. Awesome. So really quick, I just want to let you know that a lot of juiciness already this year. We are, um, I'm helping those who supporting those who are doing the Daniel fast, St. Philip's Baptist Church, along with fellowship and first central Baptist Church here on Staten Island. They are, they've come together to do the Daniel fast. I'm available for them and anybody in the country, in the world that wants to get on my, on my conference line on Sundays at 6.30. Every Sunday this month, I'm having a, a, a conference line call where you can call in any questions about the Daniel Fast. If you need any support, I'm here for you. A lot of people have some misconceptions about things. They're still thinking you can you know, eat whatever you want after six and oh, you shouldn't have rights. Somebody said, today i was like who told you that yes you can have rights so you know i want to help to debunk <clears throat> things that aren't true and support you okay so i will leave the call-in number below but the best thing to do is to go to sharingthebliss.com and opt in you'll get my seven day mini course that's my gift to you and you'll also be reminded i'll send you emails to remind you of um the juicy things that are happening as well as reminding you about the calls okay uh the other thing is like i said the end of this month the last saturday of the month i'm having a vision board work a uh, vision board workshop okay so if you're interested in that as long as you opt in to sharingthebliss.com you will get information about that as well on the the first Saturday in February, I'm going to be doing a wellness workshop at St. Philip's Baptist Church. And then the second week of February, we're starting the 28 Day Body and Soul Detox at St. Philip's Baptist Church. Woohoo! It's going to be juicy. Hey, Odessa. Odessa's in the house. Odessa is part of the 28 Day Body and Soul Detox. Teresha is going to be doing the 28 Day Body and Soul Detox. She says, this is my year. You know it's right, Carisha. This is your year, beloved. It truly, truly is. And I'm here to support you. I'm looking forward to you being part of the detox and everything. All right, everyone. Love you. I hope you were blessed. Let me know if you have any questions below. If you have any comments, I'm here for you. Go to sharingthebliss.com and opt in if you have not done so. And we'll, we'll talk soon. I love you. Bye.